All right, spring ball well underway. Some really, really good news for the Noles, some not so good news for the Noles. We'll go over both sides of everything going on right now. All right, first thing up, can't get away with not mentioning this. Again, there is good news coming. Sorry to lead with the negative, but Micah Pittman probably going to miss four to six months. I've heard could be the entire season. We'll see how that goes down, but obviously we're, we're four to six months would kind of get him coming back in that first month of the season. I think that's a really optimistic timeline, but he announced on his YouTube, we were also told in confidence the other day, again, we put that in our Patreon. So if you haven't signed up for our Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash DFNS. Could have got that inside info a little bit early. But we did make that available. Uh, just unfortunate, dealing with some hip stuff. Um, a guy that I think Florida State absolutely loves. I think they love what he brings from a blocking perspective, a work ethic, a leadership, a punt return, punt catching perspective. I think he was really, really solid out there running routes and, and catching the ball, great hands. Um, I don't think it's a detrimental loss by any means, but it does suck because Pittman is a, is a guy you really like. You really like him around. Him losing all of spring, all of fall, and then maybe even some of the season. We'll see if he's able to get back at some point. Is pretty tough on the Knolls. Not the most fun thing to have to talk about, not the most fun thing. Um, for him, I'm sure, a guy that you know you really cheer for and you really want to do well because of how hard he busts his butt, he does all the little things that you want, right? Is he the fastest guy on the team? No, but he catches every punt return, right? Is he the best wide receiver? Is he the tallest? Is he got the best measure? No, but he blocks his tail off out there at wide out. He's very solid, he's very consistent. And again, a, a kid that just absolutely works his butt off. It really, really sucks to see him go down with an injury this early, but prayers up. Obviously, wish him the very, very best. But uh, Richie, any thoughts on Micah Pittman? Yeah, and, and shout out to Micah because it sounds like he played through this through a lot of the part of the season. If if the, what we're seeing is accurate, and uh, you know, like you mentioned, he does a lot of things that people don't realize. That it doesn't seem like a big deal, but just fielding that punt, you're saving yards. We all go back to. Tavares McFadden, right? Where he would just let the ball bounce and go 20 yards back, uh, off from there. So it, it, it's a bummer. He, he is a phenomenal blocker for his size in the slot. Um, I think luckily Florida State, you know, I, I don't think this changes the outlook of Florida State season, but I, I do think it's a bummer for him because he's a guy who's came to Florida State, uh, the Oregon transfer, done everything the right way. He's clearly loved in that locker room. Just go watch his week by week vlogs on YouTube because they are, that's phenomenal content. If you guys are, are looking for something else to watch and you haven't seen it yet. So I hate that for Micah Pittman. Um, but as far as Florida state goes, I, I think they're going to be all right um, in that position, but you definitely want him back sooner than later. Yeah, for sure. I think Florida state's still in a really good position there. Uh, I've been told that Winston Wright is lining up and taking a ton of snaps in the slot and that he's moving really, really well. Florida State really likes where Winston Wright is. They really, really like uh, what he's bringing, what he's giving. And, and I think that that is going to be big for the Knowles this year. Um, I think that Winston Wright is a player that you really wanted last year, but I think it's a good thing they didn't rush him back. Let him get back to 100%. Let him take the full year off. And I think he's going to step in and, and potentially be your number two guy. I think Johnny Wilson's probably solidified as number one. But I think Winston Wright comes in. And uh, really, I don't think Florida State loses very much there. And that's not a discredit to Pittman. I, I just think that Winston looks really good so far. I know there's been a lot of questions around uh, him last year. I think taking that year off was really good. He was also a pretty dynamic punt returner at West Virginia. So I wouldn't be shocked if he gets some burn back there. I will tell you, I, I know nothing about Winston Wright's hands. I am nervous now with Pittman not back there because he was so sure-handed. But uh, I, I do think Winston Wright is um, going to step into that role and going to do it very, very well. And so I'm excited to see kind of what he can bring. Um, I've heard that uh, Jackson and Farmer, Daryl Jackson transferred from Miami, and uh, Joshua Farmer had some eyes and ears out there at practice the other day. They have been absolutely unblockable. Um, the offensive line isn't even really a concern but Jackson and Farmer just look nasty right now. They look really, really good. Obviously, Fisk is out. I've heard some maybe concerns around another defensive tackle being out as well. I'm not going to put any names out there. That's in our Patreon as well. You can go sign up and get the details there. But 
Obviously, there's people that we've not mentioned at that defensive tackle spot, so I don't think it would take very much to uh, figure out who we're talking about there. But Jackson and Farmer look like the real deal. Obviously, you're, you're going to be excited about getting Fisk in that rotation, Fabo in that rotation once the year kind of gets underway. But those two guys, if those two guys, who very likely are your like third and fourth options, right? Because I think your starters are Fabo and Fisk. Um, if those guys are absolutely dominating, we're going to have one of the best defensive lines in the country. You're also adding in Gilbert Edmond. You're adding in Pat Payton. You're adding in McClendon. And, oh, yeah, a guy that's probably going to go in the top 10 in next year's draft in Jared Verse. Uh, the defensive line is going to be an absolute strength of this team. It is going to be nasty what that defensive line can do. And so I think hearing that Jackson and Farmer are, again, the word that was used to me, unblockable right now, is very encouraging. Uh, I think that defensive front is going to be just very nice for, for FSU this season. Yeah, man. And Jackson, you just look at him, right? His body type, the way he moves. He's got first round potential and he may not even start at Florida State this year. I, I think there's a good chance he does because it, Odell's going to have a hard time saying, man, I cannot not start this guy. But it, it's exciting when you look at the depth on the defensive line, the talent. Yeah. It, it's it's flashbacks to the 90s, right? It, you know, it, it may, and I'm not saying it's going to be like the 99 defensive line or whatever it may be. But you have so much talent. It might. <laughs> it, it's got a chance. Uh, it does. But, man, it, it's just exciting if you're a Florida State fan. And, uh, you know, we've all agonized about how this offensive line has just been the weak spot of this team for, you know, ever since 2013. Well, now it's really a strength. You're almost 12 deep on that offensive line. And this defensive line is really having their way with them. Like you mentioned, the offensive line is not a concern. Like they're good, but the defense line is just that good. Don't you dare let Jared Verse develop, you know, a couple more moves outside of just speed rushing because my goodness, he might be a top three pick if that's the case. I, it, yeah. it, the depth and talent for this defensive line is just ridiculous. Obviously, they've only had one day in pads. That was Friday. They're on spring break right now. But I cannot wait to hear updates um, and from who we have boots on the ground what we're hearing out of fall camp or spring camp um, once, you know, they get some practices in pads on them because this is exciting, man. It, I, I can't remember a time as a Florida state fan. I've been this excited for spring ball since probably Jameis's spring uh, back in 2013. Yeah. Pretty nasty back then. So a couple other news, news and notes, kind of things coming out of fall camp. And then Richie, anything you've got, we'll wrap up with that. But uh I've heard Tatum Bethune had a really nice pick six, um, very athletic. I wasn't really a big turnover guy last year, but obviously was phenomenal tackling. I think that's something that's encouraging is to see his athleticism shine a little bit through. Um, really, really nice play by him over the middle. And then I won't name the defender, but Hakeem Williams went up and absolutely mossed somebody for a, just a ridiculous catch that got everybody up practice, like up off their feet, up oohing and on, and uh, – he is, he's got to be refined. I'll say this. Like, he's not going to come in and be your wide receiver number one this year. Like, I, you know, I'd love if he was. I'd love to eat that crow if he takes that big of a leap forward. But I think that his athleticism and his talent, there's a reason he's a five-star, right? Like, I, you shouldn't be shocked when five-stars do five-star things. Um, he made a play that literally had everybody at practice's jaw dropping. Um, and he's going to do some special things. I think he'll do some special things this year. And then I think over the next couple of years, um, he's going to do some – some ridiculous things in, in Tallahassee. So Hakeem Tatum making some big plays out there on practice at practice on Friday. Um, again, Winston Wright moving really, really well is, is a, a big takeaway um, that we have as well. Richie, it sounds like uh, you mentioned the trenches. We'll wrap up with this. Sounds like Duffy had a really, really good practice. A lot of people have wondered who's going to step up. Will somebody overtake Tate for that backup role? Obviously your starting role is very, very solidified. But would Brock come in and challenge? Would Tate, would, would Tate continue to be that second string guy? Or would A.J. Duffy, last year's quarterback signee, come in and step up? And Norvell seems to think that, not that the other guys haven't been good, but that Duffy's looked really, really good so far. Yeah, and I think that's one of the, for me, the most intriguing storylines of, of uh, spring ball is what does the backup situation look like, right? You know, Jordan Travis, we hope he's healthy. He was healthy pretty much all of last year outside of one half of that Louisville game. But if he does go down, I think right now everyone assumes it's Tate Rotemaker who, who's going to come in and, and clean that up, which is a safe assumption, I would say. But looking beyond to next year, right, 
we, we are going to have a new starting quarterback. Is it going to be Tate? Is it going to be Duffy? Or does Brock Glenn take that big step? Who knows? You know, A.J. Duffy sounded like he really struggled his first year at Florida State, um, you know, getting acclimated to that college level. But it sounds like he might be in, in, in tune for a pretty big spring. But I think it's fascinating to me because, like like I just said, you know, you, you have three really quality guys in Tate, A.J. Yeah. Duffy, and Brock Glenn. And I'm excited to see what Brock Glenn does. I think any quarterback who enrolls in the spring is a big deal. And that's only going to help him. But, man, I, I I do think the position is bright. You look at Mike Norville's history. You know, he had a lot of success at the quarterback position. And I don't think there's any reason to doubt that he won't in the future at Florida State. Yeah. Make sure you keep it locked here and make sure you are subscribed. If not already, we have, like I said, eyes and ears on the ground in Tallahassee. They're at camp. Um, a lot of the practices, I know they've got a scrimmage coming up in two weeks. We we will have people at that scrimmage, even though you're not supposed to. Um, so make sure you're subscribed here. We'll bring you all the updates. Again, dropped every dropped every bit of this in the uh, in the Patreon last night. So you can go to patreon.com slash DFNS. We threw that over in our Discord um, so that the, the subscribers and the supporters could get that info. Um, so you can go support there if you need that as well. I know that there are certain rules based on the, the beat, what the beat's allowed to do, report on, not report on. Um, we're not really bound by any of those rules. So we, uh, we can tell you what really happens and, and just kind of lay the facts out for you pretty plainly. So uh, big shout out to our friends over at Gramco. You can go to thegramco.com right now for any of their Delta 8 products, whether you're looking for uh, gummies, pens, flour, pre-rolls, whatever you're in the mood for, Delta 8-wise, they've got you covered. Again, thegramco.com. Use code TJ25. You'll get 25% off of your order. Uh, sales have been up in uh, January and February. You guys are loving the Delta 8. So go get you some more. TheGramCode.com. Save you 25% off your order with our code. Appreciate those folks for their support. Uh, excited to uh, partner with them again for our tailgate coming up on April 15th for the spring game. 